Hello, my name is John Paris. I'm an oil painter. I've been painting for 20, 25 years. Uh, I'm a member of three art clubs. Um, I do demonstrations in clubs, local clubs, also run workshops. Um, my equipment is, as you can see, the oils I'm using are not the ordinary oils. They're these water mixable oil colours, which I find are really first class because you've got no smell of white spirit. Uh, no, I don't use terps, I don't use any medium. And you can wash your brush in water afterwards and that saves that smell of white spirit in the house. Um, as far as palettes concerned, uh, a good idea is to get these sort of things. They don't have to be expensive. You can get these in the pound shop. Uh, you can do these A4 size what they use, uh, children use them at school. And they're ideal to take out for the day, put your paint in there, close it up and that keep for a few days. I use a tray when I'm demonstrating. I find this is easier than messing about with little pallets and things. Sometimes I use the paper pallets when I go out, which are quite good. I do like colour. Um, as you can see from some of the work here, uh, it's colourful. Um, sometimes I work in a more of a monochrome, but I get this urge to go back to colour. I do like paintings with atmosphere. Um, atmospheric paintings to me are really something to look at. Uh, just recently I've been very inspired by people like Peter Wildman and Brian Ryder who, who concentrate on atmosphere. And I find this really gives me a, a real uh, zing if I can try and capture atmosphere in a painting not to copy their work but to, you can learn from these people and that's what these videos are for um, so with that in mind i'd like to uh, start to introduce you to what colors i use um, titanium white cerulean blue french ultramarine Payne's gray yellow oak maples yellow lemon yellow touch of cadmium light uh, burnt umber burnt sienna, a little bit of purple and cadmium red just a touch on occasions and uh, alizarin and crimson I use that and of course cadmium orange just a touch. Um, the board I'm using is a uh, standard MDF 3mm board. Um, I find this is very useful to paint on. Two coats of acrylic primer, kill the white with various colours this one's a uh, yellow ochre, you can use blue, grey, I'll get different uh, feelings about things. Um, so with that in mind, I'm going to go straight ahead. Um, first of all, what I'm going to do is just do a quick drawing of our subject. Now the subject I've chosen is this one which is based on a scene I did down at Upnor. Upnor is down by the Medway. Um, it's a lovely place to paint. I used to go there many times to paint and um, you can get some really nice uh, paintings looking up the Medway towards Rochester. Um, you get some tugs there, old tugs, old uh, Thames barges and this the type of work I like. Um, so with that in mind, let's go ahead. Let's start by marking out this very quickly. Uh, this painting. What I'm going to have to do, first of all, this tug is really our, our main part of the painting, so it's got to look fairly decent. So I'll take a little bit of time marking this out, and I'm using just a bit of Payne's grey with a bit of white, and let's mark this out. As you can see, I've started painting the tug. I've got to spend a little bit of time to make sure this is looks reasonable. As I say, this, this tug really is based on a, the, the tug, the Brent, which is at Malden all the time there. And I've been there many times painting it. And it comes around like that. A, little, a lot of people get a lot of trouble painting boats. But when you paint lots and lots of them, you soon get the hang of it. That will come around there like that. There's a wall here which comes across here like this, it will meet up there like that, which gives me some idea of perspective. We have 
the building here, looking at my sketch, the building here it comes across like this. Take that over there a bit more. It comes up there, chimney, comes down here. As you can see, this is very rough, but that's what I want, just to give you some idea. Uh, you've got a lovely bank of trees here. Um, this comes around here a bit more. Let's take that down a bit deeper. Comes around there. Like this, this mud bank. Uh, at the back here, we've got this, let's call this for example our water line or the horizon line there. And at the back here we've got this lovely dark shady hills at the back here. Looking up the medway, trees here. Um, this side is a counterbalance to go in there. I will do that later. Let me try and get the majority of this painting in. Just there, there sits a nice little boat here. Nice little rowing boat, it sits there like that. Let's just plop that in and give you some idea where things are. As you can see, I've just plopped this in very roughly, but it just gives me some idea what's what. How this composition is going to work out? It goes there. There's our water line there. There I will have a counterbalance. I'll have a boat there. This is our wall, which I love painting because you can put all sorts of colours in these walls. Our trees will go right up there. Trees will come along here. And there's another building along here. It sits there like that. On top. So that's really all I need for my composition. That's a lovely tall chimney on this one, and that will work out like that. that that's correct. Our counterbalance there. Our light source is coming just off centre, round about here, which works out perfect. So I can throw lights on different areas here, uh, some reflections. There is another boat to go in here later on and a series of boats at the back, but we do those once we've got the sky in. Now, some people paint the sky last, I like to get that sky in, then I can work things from that reflection. <coughs> so, getting back to our colours again, what I'm going to do is mix up some very, very light blue and white, and using a really big brush, let's get this sky in. And this might take a little while because to me the sky on this picture is so important. It is a, an atmospheric sky and that's what I want. I don't. And sometimes you can get this under colour coming through, but that's okay. That's what I want really. So it's a good idea to tone the board up with a, a warmish colour underneath. And what happens of course that will come through in places, but that's fine, that's what we want. That gives it a nice bit of atmosphere. A bit more blue there. There we go. And I'm not too worried, I'm not putting it on thick. A lot of people when they use oils, they're always moaning about they're never dry, they're never dry, but they put oils on too thick, I think. If you, if you work the paint in and use some of the techniques which other professional artists use, i.e. Brian Ryder, uh, Peter Wildman, you work that paint in. And it's not that difficult to keep dry. Look, it's, you know, it's, it's enough blue on there for this particular sky. So what I do then, I just clean this big brush and what we'll do is then put in some Naples yellow. Now Naples yellow is my favourite colour for skies. I'll mix some of that up, Naples yellow. And I'm going to put that across here. There it goes. More yellow, a bit more maple yellow. 
down here. And what I'll do then, I'll take some of this maples up a bit further. There's a lot of light in this picture. There it goes, there it goes. And what I am going to do is introduce another colour in that maples. So if I put a bit of crimson in it, then I can get this nice evening, almost a sunset effect of the sky. Now this to me is the most important part of the painting because once I set this right, I rub all those colours in. It takes a bit of time, but it's worth taking time. Let's take a bit of more maples yellow, crimson over here. Bring that in <clears throat> down to our horizon line, or almost to the horizon. I'm just using this big brush now to get this in. Now what I'll do now is introduce a bit of yellow, the light canyon. Because I want this round the source of my light, which is round here. There it is in there. A bit more. Here we go, round here. I want the light just round this area here. A bit more Naples. A bit more of this yellow. There we go. There, my light source will be round about there. And what I do then is to use a, a Brian Ryder trick, which I learnt, and let's rub some of these colours in, blend them in. I haven't gone right to the edge there, but it doesn't matter. Let's have a look, see what we look like. Blending in nicely. And let's change the blue slightly. Let's put a bit of a nice bit of cerulean blue there. Because there's a nice bit of cloud coming in here. If I look at my, my drawing. I've got this nice bit of cerulean coming through. It's a really nice evening sky. A bit more cerulean. Here we go. Now I'm getting these nice, almost a sunset in the sky. This is what I want. Let's take some over here. Over here. And there's not a lot of paint going on there, so this, this will dry fairly quickly. It's what I want because I've got a paint on top of this. So nice blue up here. Take it over there. Let's have a look. A bit more cerulean. Nice blue cloud I've got coming over here. What I will do, of course, I will come back to this. That's got virtually the basis on. And what I do like to do is sometimes put a bit of lilac in it. But for this occasion, I'll leave it at that for the time being. And in this nice golden glow coming through the sky now, which is nice. Um, I will have, let's take this up a bit here, we'll have this uh, white coming, this sun, so just, just glazing through, just coming through a misty warm sky. Drag that down a bit with my finger. Put that down, put a bit more blue on here I think, the cerulean. And then, of course, I'm going to put some more light, some more light colour down here. So I'm going to put a bit more of this maples with a bit of white. I'll take that down along here. Too white, a bit more maples. I've picked up a bit of red there, that's fine. I'm not worried about that. Yes. What comes out, 
sometimes these happy accidents. It's picked up a bit of red there, but I don't mind that. Give it that glow. I'll take some more blue on that. I'm still want some more blue on that. Teasers in these blues. It's coming through slightly, slightly going across. Just getting that nice evening sun just coming through. A bit more this side perhaps. Let's have a look, see what it turns out like. It's getting that misty evening warm look, that's what I want. <coughs> now this background here. I'm going to put that in next. I can come back to this, put a bit more light on that later. But that will do for start. Now, what I'm going to do now is do this background, which is a, a bluey grey touch of mauve. Get these hills at the back. In I'm here. now going to paint this background in carefully. This is a bluey grey distance. I just want to throw this back as much as I can. So what I'll do, I'll mix up a bit of Payne's grey, white, and I'm going to touch a touch of lilac in that. Let's try this. I want this to look really distant, which it's, it's a nice distant bluey colour, which throws that back a bit more. That will come across here, like that. Across there, I can blend this afterwards a bit and tone it down accordingly. But let's take a bit more grey there, just a bit more there. There we go. Take that down there. It's a bit lighter there. That's what I want, really. So we've got three different hills here, but one, two, and one behind that. So that gives it a bit of dimension. I'll take that down a bit darker at the back. That will come across there, very slightly across there like that. Here we go, just bring that in there, soften up those edges a bit. So we have more or less three different dimensions there. I want a bit light there, that's okay. I'll bring this up here now and take that darker. I'll add some more darks on this. Take a bit more paint grey, take that down here. There we go, a bit more. Make sure we get these hills more or less right at the back. These are very, very distant. Just soften those up a bit with your finger. Goes right across the back there like that, and this this front bit will be our light coming through from here. Of course, it should be it's a nice bit of light coming through there. What I'm doing now is to gradually coming forward. I can soften up these edges a bit later on. So what I'll do now is put this shed shed in there. And what I want to do that in is a bit of burnt sienna, burnt sienna roof, goes there like that, it goes in there like that. And while I've got the burnt sienna out I might as well go on the large roof at the back which is this one. So what I've done here, I've just blocked these buildings in here uh, very quickly, of course, just blocked them in. It's got some detail to go on them. Um, what I'm going to do now is put this foliage in at the back of these trees. So using my Payne's grey and lemon yellow as my, for my greens, I'm going to come up here with this tree which comes right up here. i just block these in quickly. There we go, it comes right up here, this tree, the back. 
up and down the front here. There it goes in there. I'll add the light colours on afterwards using my yellow, orange, grey to get these trees blocked in at the back. This will be very dark at the back here, very dark green. I'll come down there and finish that later. Comes down there. Now, as we go over here, I will now put in a bit more lighter because I want the light catching on this side coming over from our left, of course. So, this side will be these edges will be light. We've got a bit more yellow there. There we are, a lovely bit of light coming through there. It's just catching that tree there, which will work fine for me, I hope. Comes there. Got to be careful here that we don't get them all uniform, so let's add that one up there. And then on the back here, take that down to the roof edge. Let's take this down here. You've got some trees here. Another tree there. The beauty about this subject is that you can use the landscape painting as well as marine, which is good. You've got boats, you've got mud banks, you've got trees. So you've got all these things to hopefully make a nice subject. And I'll add all these lights in afterwards. Carefully go around this funnel, because I want that funnel to stand out. So I'm deliberately doing this dark background trees. And believe it or not, these funnels, this particular one is a, is a yellowy colour. I remember I was doing this in a club and someone said, is that a yellow funnel? But in actual fact, the Brent, the tug, it's got a mustard yellow funnel. So it's absolutely right. And in any case, it looks better. Um, Bit of ochre in the yellow of course and add some more nice lights around here down here let's add this nice dark dark down here carefully go around the boat go there that go there and get these backgrounds in I can add the branches afterwards and over this corner here with my maples yellow and white I want a nice bit of catching that that sunlight just catching these edges just catching these edges as it comes through here like that like that I'm ready to paint the funnel now so what I'm going to do is mix up a, a color which suits this funnel it's a mustardy color so I'll mix up some yellow ochre bit of white with just a bit of yellow and let's see let's try this that funnel comes down there like that and it's quite a long funnel this goes up down to there it's a mustardy color like this that will suit me and the top of course I'm going to go down to some burnt umber at the top which it goes across there like that so that suits me, that colour like that. And the advantage of this, of course, this colour, I can put a lovely bit of light down the left side there, which it is. If I put a bit of yellow and white there, that puts a lovely bit of light down that side. That's fine. Now this wheelhouse, or cabin, whatever you like to call it, I would do that in a burnt sienna. Burnt sienna here goes down that side, goes down that side like that. That goes there, the line across there, and this side will be darker. So it goes slightly darker. Bit of burnt umber which goes down that side because that side's in the shade like that. And of course, I've got to put some light across the top. So let's put a nice bit of creamy white and a bit of ochre on the top. 
fish goes across there, goes across there like that. And now one important thing here which I am going to put, and that's a couple of little red rings around that funnel. And one goes around there, one goes around there, like that. And of course a bit more detail as a piece goes around there. Let's put those windows in. Pane's grey, bit of pane's grey. Little window there, small one there, one there. That goes down there, like that. Right, that looks after that bit. What I'm going to do now is finish off this tug. Um, what he has got, this tug, he has a boat sitting on top here, a little boat. Just a little rowing boat, safety boat that sits on top like that and the back bit I'm going to do we'll do that with complete contrast now I'm going to do that a blue blue grey for the back put a bit more blue on that this little boat sits nicely on top there like that just like that a bit darker blue I think It's on there like that. What I've got to do now is tidy up this boat in general. This bit goes across here like that. A dark piece goes across there to support the boat. And these cabins which are down here, I want to do those in burnt sienna and white. Give me a brownie grey where the cabin go around like that. Goes around there. In here you've got the small entrance to a small area. There, there, like that. The back, this boat, I've got it. It's burnt sienna goes over there like that. I'll tell you why I'm doing it in burnt sienna in a minute. And that bit goes around there. Nice dip around there, like that. Goes like that. This bit goes very, very dark under here. Just block that in like this. I'm going to put some detail on this boat. Obviously, it's more detail to go in. This is in burnt sienna and umber to get it nice and dark. It's a nice bit of burnt sienna goes round there. Goes the shape of this goes there, and that swings away like that. Now this boat here, I want to put some darks around here. There it is. Using my Burnt umber, nice and dark, goes around there. Goes around there. Just block this in. And I'll put a bit of detail on it, of course. Just block this in like this. This one goes to the bottom. Let's get this nice dark around here. And what I'm going to do now is put a bit of orange on this burnt sienna, which I love doing because it just gives it that bit of glow. On this corner where the light's coming down from the left, just one stroke like that. And it just gives it a nice bit of light. I love trying to get this light effect, it's a bit more, got to do it in one stroke, it's gone. I'm happy with that. Put a bit of detail here. Don't send a bit there, a bit there. It goes around there, like that. There's also a thin brush, a bit more orange there, 
or red would be better perhaps. Have a look around there, around there. Let's put these, always put these on the side. One there, there's another one here. That's all right, more white on that. Goes around there like that. Tidy this boat up a bit on top there. Cut the small compartments at the back here, one there, one there. Now, the important thing now is to put the mast on this boat. And for that, I've got to use my rest here. Now I made this rest up and I think it's ideal. It's not what they usually use, but with this you can just hook it over the top and you can draw the vertical lines, no trouble at all. Um, so let's have a look. Up here we've got this mast which comes up there. And it's not terribly tall, this mast from there. And there's another one up here which supports the boat. And like that, you put that one support down here. You can see how handy this is. Just hook it over the top. I don't know why everybody don't use these. They're so handy. It goes to the back of the boat there like that. And of course, this one, you will have a support down there, down there, down there. One very important thing is to put some light on those masts. So what I do is then I put a bit of my white, put a bit of my Naples yellow, just touch that down there, even a bit lighter. Let's have a look. I love these little touches of light. And this is what makes the painting stand out I think these touches of light got to have them better 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 so that's not bad really I think at the moment we'll leave it like that the next step now is to get this other boat in a bit more detail on this water darken it in places let me get this other boat in For that I'm going to use burnt umber Burnt over this side, there he goes, like that. And this side will be burnt on the but will be lighter because the light's coming across there. There he goes, he goes there like that. Drag this down, these reflections. And not to forget, we must put some light around the top of this. There it goes. Up there, up there, like that. There we go. Let's like add some more dark and this shape of this hole, like that. Show some reflections. And once again, using my miler stick or rest, we'll alter this boat, put a sail on it. This is a Thames barge, hopefully. Comes up here like this. Very, very tall mast. Nice. Here we go. Put a burnt umber. Right up there like that. And this makes a perfect stop for this end. Goes up there like that. And this side here goes like that. And all we've got to do then is put some sails on it. So using my bird sienna, I'll we'll go up there like this with a either a brownie colour, this sails, a bird sienna type colour. And this one will come down here like this. 
this makes a perfect stop to this end part. And what I'm going to do here is add a bit of orange on this because we've got this lovely light coming down. So we will put some orange. But let's tidy this part up a bit. This will go up there like that. Carefully put these struts in. Got to add those in, I'm afraid. Got to put something there. One, two, three. Here we go. A bit more burnt umber. Coming down there, one, two, three. Now down here we'll have a piece. This, I'm not sure what they call this part. I've been painting these for years, but I don't know all the names of the parts, unfortunately. There we are, it goes like that. So then I must put some reflection here. So let's touch these corners up bit of light for this last nice, nice bit of light there. Nice bit of light coming down there. Once again a, a little red flag, here he is, up there. Like that. A bit more, a bit more rigging on this because there's an awful lot of rigging on these things. And we're not going to put it all on but just indication like that. Like that, like that. He sits there. Once again, I'm going to touch up this orange. Nice bit of orange here, so light's catching it. Makes all the difference, I think. Just giving it that little glow. And I can take that down underneath that reflection. A bit more rigging here. A bit more there. A bit, bit, bits and pieces. Bring this down here. There we go. Burnt sienna, different brush. Bit of burnt sienna down here. Let's give that some indication. Like that. And then just in the back here, we've also got some more. And the two other boats here. There's one over back here. There's one here. With sticks and boats in different places, there's, there's signs of boats here. This is up north, don't forget, down on the midway, so you've got all sorts of things going on. Here we go, that goes there. There's some, some indication of these boats, they don't have to be very important or very. Pronounced, there's a boat there, for example, something over here, bits and pieces here and there. What I do want to do is to get a bit more reflection on that in a minute on that water. But for now, what I want to do is block in this the front here with ochre. There we go, it goes round there, round there, round there. The sandy colour. It's a bit darker than that, but we're going to use it a bit lighter. Around here, of course, will be darker because that is in a shade there. There he goes across there. Around here will be lighter. So, mixing up some yellow ochre and white, I can make that nice and light around here. There it is, round there. Round here will be yellow, ochre and white. Bit of Naples yellow, nice bit of light around this area. Come across here, round the boat. And this side of course will be dark. Some sort of shading coming in here, shadows. Now let's take some more light around the back here. I'm not going to go too light with that. I want to bring in some different shades here. There's some greens coming in the side here, which breaks up this brown nicely. Green and brown around here. Let's bring in this dark green again from this side. And then go to our ochres again. 
Okay, here we are. Okay. And the boat carefully. Right, so what I want to do now, I think it's more or less finished, uh, bearing in mind that I'll look at this and add to it um, at this stage, probably put more texture onto the uh, beach here or the side, a little bit more sparkle in the water perhaps. Let's see what it's like framed up, see, have a look, see what he looks like. Um, let's have a look. This is a standard 20 by 16, so it should fit this, it does. Let's have a look. I always like to frame them up and I think it adds, adds another dimension to it. Um, well, that's it. What do you think? That's it. Um, to do with probably a little bit more movement on the water. A little bit more texture on the side here. Apart from that, it's created an atmosphere, it's an evening scene really. I could probably do with a few lights on these houses in the window, something like that that I would do. Um, I like this end stop here. Uh, that doesn't, the eye doesn't go out of the picture. Uh, this is focal point obviously here. And the colours are quite pronounced and strong, but that's what I like. And I like this sky, it's an evening, late evening sky. Um, and I, it's a pleasure to do this. I hope you enjoyed it and um, happy painting and thank you very much.